praying uh, for the ultrasound to be purchased. Uh, years ago now, we were contributing to that and praying for that and to hear what God is doing through that is exciting. The Baptist General Convention of Oklahoma has a mobile unit that's now being used. Well, turn in your Bibles to Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, verses 10 to 12. What I have to say to you won't take long, and it'll be very clear, very direct. I intend to name names this morning, because we need to pray about this battle for life. The number one cause of death worldwide is abortion. The number one cause of death in America is abortion. One of the most dangerous places to be alive in America is in the womb of a woman. Stand with me if you would. Follow along as I read Proverbs 24, 10 to 12. As we think today, we must end abortion now. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. If you say, Behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? What have we just read together? We've read the inerrant, infallible, all-sufficient Word of God. May the Lord burn anew and afresh in our hearts and our minds today and renew our, our zeal and our vigor to stand for life, to practice the Sixth Commandment when, we, when it tells us we shall not do any murder, understanding that it calls us to do everything we can to defend our own lives and the lives of others. Thank you. Please be seated. It was fitting, I believe, in the last two Sundays that we looked at a vision for 2020 and focused in on America Praise and Oklahoma Praise and challenged one another to be a praying church in 2020, challenging you. I haven't heard from anyone yet who will step forward and say, I want to be that prayer coordinator you talked about. We're still praying about that, still waiting to hear from you. And I would remind you that in that agenda, America Praise, that number six says we're going to pray for life to be valued and protected through all stages of life beginning at conception. And number seven, we're going to pray for local and national government leaders. As Grace has said, this Wednesday marks the 47th anniversary of Roe v. Wade. In a 7-2 Supreme Court decision, abortion on demand was legalized in 1973. It started in 1969 when Norma McCorvey, who had a problem pregnancy, was used as a pawn by the abortion industry to push a case forward that we came to know as Roe v. Wade from Dallas County. She was named as, as Jane Roe uh, in the case. Wade was the, uh, was the district attorney of Dallas County, and they brought suit against them for her right to terminate her pregnancy. By the way, her pregnancy was never terminated. She brought the baby to term. She claimed she had been raped. That turned out to be a lie. The baby was offered up for adoption and cared for. Years later, Norma McCurvey was, McCurvey was brought to faith in Christ, we believe, and she changed her tune. She came out very honestly about her story, how she was used and coerced by the abortion industry to push an agenda through that would open up a business. Uh, Margaret Sanger's Planned Parenthood, which is really planned barrenhood, which gets hundreds of millions of dollars, tax dollars, to operate. This year, Planned Parenthood is spending $45 million of those dollars to support pro-abortion candidates in the election. It is a wicked scheme, as Grace mentioned. When they go into one of the Planned Parenthood clinics or one of the pro-abortion clinics, there is an ultrasound there typically, but it is not shown to the woman it's turned away from her because they know what you and I know, that when you see life, you're for life more often than not. And so we're engaged in a very wicked enterprise. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, founded Planned Parenthood to extinguish the mongrels among us. 
talking about black people, talking about minorities, talking about children. See, all things being equal, my mother should have aborted me. I was a problem pregnancy, number five of six children. She was married to a man who didn't care for his children. But then number six, she was advised by the doctor to get an abortion. And number six, Tom Askell just preached at the G3 conference yesterday to 6,000 people. He's one of the great preachers in the country. Margaret Sanger wanted to extinguish the mongrels, extinguish children born into families who had a lot of kids. We're in a fight that is begun by the devil himself. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said He had come in John 10.10 10, that we might have life. He is the author of life. God opens the womb. He alone allows conception. And when He does, it is for a purpose. No matter the circumstances that brought about the conception, our God acts on purpose. Our governor, when he was running for governor, said... In his platform, I believe human life begins at conception, and I'll fight to protect the rights of the unborn in Oklahoma and across the nation. In our state legislature, Republicans outnumber Democrats. In the Senate, 39 to 9, and in the House, 77 to 24. Well, then Oklahoma ought to be an abortion-free state, shouldn't it? There shouldn't be any problem. With abortion, but yet in, a, in Oklahoma, five to six thousand children are aborted every year. Years ago, a bill was introduced and it was challenged by the Right to Life organization. I'll talk a little more about that in a minute. It was a, a bill to criminalize abortion. Last year, another bill was introduced called SB 13, Senate Bill 13 criminalizes abortion, calls it what it is. It is murder. Some people say, well, isn't it harsh to suggest to a woman that she's murdering her baby? No, it is the truth to suggest that because she's being lied to by the enemy of her soul. Murder is not the unpardonable sin. We can say to anyone who's had an abortion, yes, you murdered your child, but God is merciful and His grace is greater than your sin and you can be forgiven for that. But we need to speak honestly about what it is. In Senate Bill 13, part of the text read, it is the intent of the legislature to provide to the un to unborn children the equal protection of the laws of this state, to establish that a living human child from the moment of fertilization upon the fusion of a human spermatozoan with a human ovum is entitled to the same rights, powers, privileges, justice, and protections as are secured or granted by the laws of this state to any other human person and to treat as void and of no effect any and all federal statutes, regulations, executive orders, and court rulings which would deprive an unborn child of the right to life, which means if Senate Bill 13 is allowed out of committee and is voted on and adopted into law in Oklahoma, then Roe v. Wade means nothing to the state of Oklahoma. No executive order means anything to the state of Oklahoma. The battle is fierce. So why is abortion still legal in Oklahoma? It is because of certain pro-life agendas. It may shock you to hear that, but it's true. The National Right to Life Vice President, Tony, and I don't, I've never heard the, his last name pronounced. I hope to find it out soon, but I'm going to try it. Lawinger, I think, L-A-U-I-N-G-E-R. He's the vice president, has been for 40-something years of the National Right to Life organization. It's a primarily Catholic organization. But he's also the chairman of Oklahomans for Life and has been that for 30-something years. And he stands in the way. He writes letters to Oklahoma legislators saying, do not support Senate Bill 13. The argument is it will overturn all the incremental legislation that's been passed that slows down abortion. He is joined in the Oklahoma legislature by two men, I understand, who are Southern Baptists. Senator Jason Smalley from Stroud, Senate District 28, who's been a senator since 2014, and Senator Greg Treat from Oklahoma City, who's been a senator since 2011 of Senate District 47. They hold positions in the Senate.
that are blocking SB 13 from even coming out of committee. If it came out of committee, it would be overwhelmingly passed into law by the Oklahoma legislature. Governor Stitt has said, he's on record, I will sign SB 13 if it is, comes out of the legislature and is voted into law. So here's where the battle is. So to our text. I want you to see from this text four things. First, the rebuke to those who quit in the face of adversity. Second, the rescue demanded for those who are victims. Third, the ridiculousness of claiming ignorance. And fourth, the repayment sure to come from an offended creator. First, the rebuke to those who quit in the face of adversity. Verse 10 says, in the, if you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. We need to repent. I need to repent. Before I came to you, I was in Louisiana, and I was on the front lines fighting for life. We were, we were lobbying the legislature in, in Louisiana and came very close to getting a clean, no exceptions bill out of committee. It was stopped by the influence of a, of a, of a mega church, Southern Baptist Church in Louisiana, sadly. I came here engaged in pastoring and have not paid close attention to what's happening in the Oklahoma legislature. So I repent of that. I'm repenting to you today. And I intend going forward that there will be fruit of my repentance. I've been in touch with Oklahoma leaders. I've been in touch with the abolish human abortion movement. And we hope to be making some strides. My prayer is, as I will share with you in a few minutes, that we can bring these groups together. It should be a rebuke to us. I don't know where you've been in this issue. Maybe you have not been in the issue at all. That's okay. Repent. God will forgive you. Let's get in the battle. One of the things we'll do is when we leave here today, there will not be a single baby bottle left on that table. All right? We can take all those baby bottles home. We can fill them up with whatever we want to fill them up with. that will help finance Pregnancy Resource Center. The warning is there. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. No matter what we say, no matter how we feel, we cannot afford to grow weary now. In fact, I believe there is more reason now to be encouraged that there is a movement underfoot in Oklahoma that we may well see in 2020 a law passed that will abolish abortion, will criminalize abortion. Sure, a lower court is going to, is going to strike it down. There are liberal judges out there, and they will take a swipe at it as soon as it happens. But it will begin to make its way through the appellate process. And in God's good timing, it will come before Supreme Court, which we have reason to believe is ready and willing to overturn Roe v. Wade nationally. Now is not the time to quit, brothers and sisters. Now is the time to roll up the sleeves, take a second breath, redouble your efforts, and get in the business of saving lives. Secondly, the rescue demanded for those who are victims. Verse 11 says, rescue those who are being taken away to death. Hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter. Very interesting picture here. I don't hesitate at all to say that a woman who is, who is inclined to have an abortion is indeed an accessory to murder if she goes through with it, but she is also a victim. Women are pressured by the men who impregnated them to get abortions. Women are pressured by their families to get abortions. They are pressured by the stigma that they think will come to them to get an abortion. So they are at once both accessories to murder, but they are victims, and our Scripture speaks to that. Rescue those who are being taken away to death. That's the baby in the womb. Through no fault of the child, no matter how the child was conceived. Some say, well, what if the child was conceived in rape or incest? My response is, in what other arena in this country do we execute the child for the crime of the father? Execute the rapist. Execute the incestuous man. Care for the child who had nothing to do with the crime. Children are being led away to the slaughter through no fault of their own. We hear that it's a woman's issue. It's women's rights. It's reproductive rights. Therefore, a man doesn't have any business speaking to it. What about half of the abortions which take in little baby girls? Who speaks for these women? Who's standing up for that woman's rights? The language that's being used is devilish, 
Planned Parenthood, the abortion industry comes straight from the pit of hell, from the devil who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He always has. He always will. That's his M.O. We must rescue those who are being taken away to death, the baby in the womb. We must hold back those who are stumbling to the slaughter, the woman who is vulnerable and inclined to have an abortion. That's why we need to pray for and support places like PRC because they are on the front lines doing that very thing, stopping abortion in its tracks. Third, the ridiculousness of claiming ignorance. If you say, behold, we did not know this, does not he who weighs the heart perceive it? You see, folks, what we're being told in this text is we know from the Scriptures that life begins at conception. You can say, well, I didn't know there was an abortion clinic uh, in Tulsa. Now we know. Now we know. You can go by and see it. It's on Sheridan. I wasn't aware of Pregnancy Resource Center in Owasso. You had not been listening very closely through the years here, but that's okay. If you've just now heard that, now you know. Now you know. So we cannot use that excuse. If you say, I didn't know there were five to 6,000 abortions a year in Oklahoma. Now you know. I didn't know Southern Baptists were in the legislature keeping this from being stopped. Now you know. I didn't know the right to life. Was, yeah, you know. You know. Ignorance cannot be pleaded. It's ridiculous to plead this. We know. There's too much information out there. And we need to consider God who weighs the heart. His, he's weighing your heart and my heart today. What are you doing about this? What are you going to do about this? What have you done about this? Well, I hadn't done much. That's okay. Repent and be forgiven. And then engage. Bring forth fruit of repentance. Fourth. The repayment sure to come from an offended creator. Does not he who keeps watch over your soul know it? And will he not repay man according to his work? Brothers and sisters, we are under the judgment of God in this country. And you're seeing it happen culturally. Some of the things I've addressed to you, the whole cultural warrior, social justice issue happening within our denomination and outside our denomination. It's the judgment of God. Why? unrequited blood, the blood of 60 million babies who were not allowed to breathe the air that we breathe, cries out from the ground, avenge us, O God. And God is avenging. He has put our nation under bondage. And I believe we experienced eight years of bondage in the previous administration where horrible things happened in this nation. And He's brought us to a time where we have an opportunity to take a stand. Oklahoma can this year, by God's grace, begin the end of abortion. Some people say, well, if we if you abolish abortion, then what happens to the pregnancy resource centers? They're more important than ever because crisis pregnancy will still be a reality. But now they will be the only funneling point to deal with it and not killing babies. I told you back in November that on, during the Oklahoma Baptist Convention, we had the opportunity to take Resolution 7 and add an amendment to it. For the sake of time, I'll not read the resolution. I will read the amendment that we added to it. I had the privilege of speaking to that and reading it into the record. And the messengers at the Oklahoma Convention overwhelmingly, cheeringly, with applause, adopted this with the amendment. Finally, we call upon the Oklahoma State Legislature to enact legislation that calls for the immediate end of abortion without exception or compromise. I said to the messengers then, I'll say again today, we want to come away and we want to give the leaders of the BGCO something in a resolution that says this is where we stand. The leaders can go to the legislature and they can go to our lawmakers and say, Oklahoma Baptists, the messengers gathered at the 2000." 19 convention spoke and voted and said, this is what we want. We want abortion to end now without exception or compromise immediately. So, what are we to do? Well, February the 11th is Abolish Abortion Day at the state capitol. God willing, I plan to be there. Uh, may end up even being one of the speakers. I want, you to tell, I want to tell you what we need to look for in a bill. Why well, SB 13 is so important that I want to tell you who to pray for. So hang on. I'm going to go like Jehu through the streets of Jerusalem. You ready? First of all, abolition bills outlaw abortion from conception. Not when you hear the heartbeat. By the time you hear the heartbeat, there's a human being in the womb. Conception. When conception occurs, life is in the womb. Secondly, abolition bills do not include any exceptions for abortion. 
the argument of rape and incest, incest and life of the mother. Those are very sentimental arguments, emotional arguments, but they're specious arguments because we have technology today that can address every one of those things. And as I said earlier, you don't execute the child for the crime of the father. Third, abolition bills criminalize abortion itself and establish equal justice for the preborn, which is the constitutional requisite to get a law before the Supreme Court. If it's not equal justice for every citizen, the Supreme Court will not hear it. And that's been the flaw with every pro-life bill that's come before the Supreme Court since Roe v. Wade. Fourth, abolition bills do not submit to the unconstitutional ruling of Roe. If our state adopts this law, Roe has no business in our state. How can you say that? Folks, it's against the law. Marijuana is against the law federally. It has been voted into law. Whether you like it or not, it is law in Oklahoma. That's proof positive that Oklahoma can pass a statute that the federal government cannot touch. We can vote into to law, SB 13, and Roe v. Wade means nothing in Oklahoma and ultimately will mean nothing across the nation. Finally, abolition bills repeal or supersede all statutes which allow for abortion. So what do we do? We're going to pray. This is the year I'm calling you to pray. America prays. Oklahoma prays. Bethel prays. I, I, I pray that we'll pray. Pray for those who support abolishing abortion. Russell Hunter is the name you need to know. Not a perfect guy. Russell's done some things, and he'll, he'll be the first to admit it. But he heads up Free the States and Abolish Human Abortion. Pray for him. He is pushing forward the abolition movement in, in Oklahoma. Pray for those who oppose abolition. Tony Loinger, the National Right to Life Vice Chairman and the Oklahomans for Life Chairman. Pray for him that he will have a change of heart. I'm praying these things for these folks that oppose. Dear God, change their hearts or change their geography. And I don't care what kind of means it takes to do that. If their hearts will not be changed, then remove them from the influence they have. Third, pray for those who oppose Senate Bill 13. Sadly, last year, Oklahoma Baptist leadership came out with a letter opposing that. Through the influence of people like Tony Lowinger, they sent out a letter to Oklahoma Baptists why they opposed SB 13. Dr. Blake Gideon, who's a dear brother, and I've had conversations with Blake. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful uh, that, that he, he, he is with us in heart. I pray that he will be with us in voice and in his stance. He's the president of Oklahoma Convention. Dr. Hans Dilbeck, executive director, treasurer, pray for Hans, that he'll have a change of heart. Brian Hobbs, editor of the Oklahoma Baptist Messenger, pray for him, that he'll have a change of heart. We need to get these folks together. There is no reason for folks who are pro-life to be fighting one another. The devil is loving this. We can come together and coalesce and send a message and get a bill out of the Oklahoma legislature this year that will start the process of overturning Roe v. Wade, but will end immediately abortion in Oklahoma. Pray for those who blocked SB 13 last year. Senator Greg Treat. Pray for him. He's a Southern Baptist, member of a Southern Baptist church. I want you to understand, if we had a senator in our church who had had that kind of a role, he would have been excommunicated summarily. There's no reason for this man not to be disciplined by his congregation. Senator Jason Smalley, the same. Pray for and contact your state legislators. Now, we live in different districts. Here are mine, and they're probably yours if you're, have a, if you're in an Owasso zip code. Senator J.J. Dossett who's a Democrat, Senate District 34. There's his phone number. Pray for him and contact him and make sure you let him know that you expect him as our representative, as our senator, to vote for SB 13. And if he says he's not going to, then assure him that we'll do everything in our power that his Senate term is short-lived. Representative, you know, Mark Van Curen. It's my understanding he grew up in this church. Reach out to him. Pray for him. Encourage him to do the right thing. Brothers and sisters, it starts with prayer. It ends with prayer. Will you pray? Will you join the cause intentionally, not haphazardly, not half-heartedly, intentionally, proactively, preemptively, pro-life, not just pro-life, with an abolitionist intent 
Grace and I were speaking just before the service. Our Southern Baptist forefathers were on the wrong side of the slavery issue. Sad. It's a sad part of a sad chapter in our in our heritage. The same arguments used to promote slavery and prolong slavery are the arguments being used today to prolong abortion. Let's not be on the wrong side of this issue like our forefathers were on slavery. Let it be said of us, by our children and our grandchildren, my peers, those who went before me, stood for the abolition of abortion. Because of that, I live in a country where human abortion has been abolished and is illegal. That's one of the paths if we really expect God to bless America. There are other issues, to be sure. But until this one is solved, we have no reason to expect God to bless America. Is this a gospel issue? You better believe it. Every one of these children is made in the image of God. Jesus said, our Savior said, the one who hung on the cross said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. Let's pray.